I'm Professor Graham Yorston, neuropsychiatrist, and in this episode of 5 Minute Mental Health Disorders, I'll be discussing Ekbom syndrome, or delusional parasitosis. Ekbom syndrome is a delusional disorder characterized by an unshakable belief that you are infected or infested with some kind of parasite. Worms, mites, bacteria, fungus, even mice. Carl Axel Ekbom, a Swedish neurologist, first described delusional parasitosis as a pre-senile delusion of infestation in 1937, and I translated his paper into English in 2003. There is a much earlier case, however, that of James Harrington, who, after being imprisoned in the Tower of London in 1661, began to imagine that his sweat turned to flies and sometimes to bees and other insects. And there were further descriptions in French 19th century psychiatry and dermatology texts. But Ekbom's name has stuck. The conviction of having parasites often begins with itching or a sensation of something crawling or burrowing into the skin or an internal organ. These may be real physical sensations that are interpreted in a delusional way, or they can be tactile hallucinations. Patients consult general practitioners and dermatologists and often take evidence of their infestation along with them. In the past, this was often put into a matchbox, but nowadays it is more likely to be pictures, videos or printouts of information they have downloaded from the internet. They may damage their skin attempting to dig out bugs or by using strong chemicals to disinfect themselves. They often get very angry when a mental health explanation is offered and may seek opinions from multiple doctors as they pursue their conviction. They are usually very reluctant to see a psychiatrist. Whilst the original conceptualization of this disorder was of infestation with living parasites, it has been extended to include people who are convinced that painful skin sensations and sores are due to microscopic fibers, so-called Morgellons disease although this is hotly contested. I can also recall seeing a patient who presented to the emergency department convinced that she had an atomic pin in her foot. Patients often identify a precise onset with symptoms starting after an insect bite, foreign travel, sharing clothes or contact with someone they believe to be infected. This can lead them to focus on minor skin blemishes or sensations they were previously able to ignore, and then misattributing their symptoms to a parasitic cause. Ekbom syndrome is quite rare as a primary disorder, but more common as a symptom of another disorder, such as severe depression, schizophrenia, dementia, or Parkinson's disease. It generally occurs in mid to late life and is twice as common in women. It also occurs in people with cocaine addiction who experience a sensation of ants crawling on their skin called formication. In some cases, similar delusions develop in close relatives. This is known as folie à deux, or shared psychotic disorder. I can recall a case in which a mother and daughter shared delusions of having a sexually transmitted disease from sharing towels. This was when I was working in Scotland and their pronunciation of towels as tools certainly made me stop and think. As for most mental health disorders, the cause is not fully understood. It may be related to excess dopamine in part of the brain called the striatum as a result of reduced dopamine transporter function. This would explain why drugs that inhibit dopamine reuptake, for example cocaine and amphetamines, can cause it and why antipsychotics, which modulate dopamine transmission, improve symptoms. The diagnosis is usually very obvious when people vehemently reject reassurances that skin examination and laboratory testing is normal. But clearly it is important for physicians to be thorough in excluding dermatological causes and medical conditions that can present with skin symptoms. Because it is rare, there are no randomized controlled trials of medication, but antipsychotics have long been used successfully in this and other delusional disorders, 
providing the patient is willing to accept a mental health explanation. Reassurance rarely works, but cognitive behavioural therapy can be useful. When the delusions arise as symptoms of another disorder, treatment of the primary disorder usually results in an improvement. Because many patients reject a psychiatric diagnosis and refuse to take medication, the disorder can go on for many years. For this reason, a phased approach to treatment has been suggested, with the first steps focusing on establishing rapport and trust between physician and patient. Sadly, this doesn't always work, and for some people their lives become dominated by their delusions of infestation and their attempts to prove to others that they are correct. Thank you for watching. If you found it interesting, please like and subscribe. And as always, I'd love to hear your comments and any suggestions you may have for future topics. See you next time.